The following video is sponsored by Trainline. This summer, with all my foreign travel plans derailed, I decided to go on an adventure a little closer to home. It's precisely what I did two years ago, visiting tons of the places that feature on the British coins and taking me all over the United Kingdom. But this time, my itinerary would be the British banknotes, or more specifically, the English ones. You see, these banknotes showcase some of the most iconic and important sites the country has to offer, many of which I've never been to before. And with this unusually sunny weather and an incredibly extensive train network at my disposal, what better way to get the summer back on track? And like all good adventures, it starts at the train station. I bought my ticket using the Trainline app, and it's entirely digital and contactless, meaning I don't have to touch a thing. Just scan my phone, board the train, and then enjoy the view as we hurtle towards London at breakneck speed. Seriously, no more pesky ticket machines or mountains of used tickets. And there's even live tracking to see if your train's on schedule and minimise your time at the station. As we slowed down on the approach to London Waterloo, I could see the Shard, Gherkin and Walkie Talkie building welcoming us to the city. I could even glimpse one of our upcoming locations beyond the rooftops. This is the Bank of England, home to the second largest hoard of gold in the world, worth over £200 billion. As the UK central bank, they're responsible for issuing the banknotes, at least for England and Wales, which is why its image can be seen on the front of each. The initials BOE can also be seen in teeny tiny microprint across much of the 5 and £10 notes. Now when I said this was the only location to feature on all of the banknotes, technically that's true, but all designs also feature the coronation crown, kept inside the jewel house at the Tower of London. Unfortunately, you're not allowed to film inside, so here's a picture of my cat wearing a crown instead. And then it was onto the places only found on the £5 note. This bright blue banknote features Winston Churchill on the reverse, the Prime Minister who led the country to victory during the Second World War. The note symbols and locations all have something to do with Churchill's life, such as our next stop, the Houses of Parliament. Obviously, this building houses the Parliament, which played a central role in Churchill's story. His father first became an MP when Winston was less than a year old, and his own Commons career lasted an incredible 64 years. So with this coupled with the building's international recognition, it's no surprise it was included on the note. Interestingly, the clock's face reads 3pm. The time Churchill delivered his famous first speech, saying the words, I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears and sweat. Big Ben can also be seen in the transparent window, although today it's in a pretty sorry state, midway through a four-year renovation project. They make sure at least one of his faces is on display at any point, but it's still a pretty unsightly sight. Let's just pretend that's not there. And in the adjacent Parliament Square can be found a statue of Churchill. Here he is, the man himself. The final place on the fiver is this rather peculiar looking symbol on the back. It's an aerial view of the hedge maze at Blenheim Palace, Churchill's family home. Sadly, the maze is currently closed, and I was unable to get permission to fly a drone to view it as it appears on the note, so this was the only location I didn't actually visit. Anyway, it's back on the train to continue the adventure. This time, we're en route to Winchester to explore the Jane Austen-themed £10 note. Jane Austen is regarded as one of the greatest authors of all time, completing six full-length novels in her tragically short life. Austen herself made a similar journey 200 years earlier, but under radically different circumstances. The next station is Winchester. She was ill, rapidly declining with an unknown condition, and travelled to Winchester for treatment. But within just a few weeks, her condition significantly worsened, and she died aged 41. No one's precisely sure what it was, but that's not really relevant. The world had just lost one of the greatest authors to have ever lived. A few streets away from the house where she died can be found Winchester Cathedral, the building portrayed in the banknote's transparent window. Started around 1,000 years ago, the building was constructed over the course of half a millennium, and as such is a peculiar sort of guide to the changing architectural styles of the time. It's one of the longest cathedrals in Europe, a building Jane Austen very much admired, 
and is undeniably deserving of a place on the note. And inside the cathedral can be found Jane Austen's tomb. The simple gravestone makes no mention of Austen's writings, but as her fame and reputation grew in the years and decades after her death, her nephew funded a brass plaque around 50 years later. The plaque, located on the wall beside her grave, begins by immediately highlighting her work and is a much more fitting tribute to the author. I like to imagine her nephew would have been delighted to learn that she's now recognised on our currency. And with that, it's on to the other £10 note location, Godmersham House. You can just about see the chimneys in the background. This building is now an optician's college and is completely closed to the public, but there is a public footpath running alongside the property that offers the occasional glimpse. The house used to belong to Austin's brother, Edward, and she would visit often over a 15-year period, working on many of her books here. Godmersham Park is even said to be the inspiration for her novel Mansfield Park, now because of the giant hedge running parallel to the house either side of the footpath, it's only really visible from two specific points, and even then it's the back of the house. The solution? It was finally time to take to the skies. Isn't it magnificent? Using the drone, we were also able to get a closer view of the secluded Grecian temple atop a hill nearby where Austin would often spend long summer afternoons working on her latest manuscript. It's crazy to think that is literally where she wrote some of the greatest books of all time. And then finally, from one of the greatest authors of all time, it's on to one of the greatest painters of all time, J.M.W. Turner. But for that, we need to return to London. Our first stop is the Royal Academy of Arts, where Turner trained and later became an associate. Although not pictured on the note, the institution's name can be seen in microprint all over its design. From there we walk to the wonderful Tate Britain, an art gallery just downriver from the Houses of Parliament that boasts the world's largest collection of Turner's work. This strange symbol at the top of the note's reverse depicts the gallery's marvellous spiral staircase. It's far too big to fit in the frame, but hopefully this gives you an approximate idea. The letter T stands for Tate, and these little bumps around the symbol's edge are the Rotunda's alcoves, each home to a different sculpture. Though this staircase may look hundreds of years old in keeping with the rest of the building, it was only completed in 2013 as part of a £45 million renovation project, making it an odd choice to appear on the note. Now although this place is home to the world's largest Turner collection, unfortunately for me, it's all currently off display. But luckily for me, his most famous painting, the one depicted on the banknote, is found inside the National Gallery at Trafalgar Square. Before we go in, there is actually another location out here, the square's famous fountains. The shape of the note's transparent window is borrowed from the shape of these fountains, a rectangle with four overlapping circles. Admittedly, this one sounds like a bit of a stretch, but it's something the Bank of England officially declared upon the note's release. Anyway, it's time to go inside the gallery and see Turner's greatest masterpiece, The Fighting Temeraire. The painting depicts a HMS Temeraire being towed up the River Thames by a tugboat on its way to be broken up after a long and heroic career. This sense of ending is further symbolised by the sun setting over the estuary and casting a magnificent orange glow over the scene. In a 2005 poll, it was voted the nation's favourite painting, and it's not difficult to see why. The gallery is also home to several other Turner paintings, including the beautiful Rain, Steam and Speed and Margate from the Sea, so it seems only appropriate to combine those things and catch a train to Margate. So it's bright and early and we're on our way to Margate to see the final two locations. Whilst the previous train journeys had all been about an hour in length, this one was three and a half hours in total and felt like a proper adventure. The fact that I'd never before been to Margate only added to this, as did the fact that we could occasionally see the ocean beyond the tracks. As someone who lives very inland, there's something incredibly exciting about being beside the sea. I was armed with my travel essentials that made the journey fly by as quickly as the rolling hills and beautiful English countryside. Plus, I could even use Trainline's live tracking feature to see exactly where we were on the journey. The next station is Margate. I was almost disappointed to finally arrive, but the smell of the sea air instantly snapped me out of it. 
We've literally just stepped out the station and I can already see the two places we're heading to. Margate is a quaint and charming British seaside town, a place Turner frequented, describing its skies as the loveliest in all Europe. He drew inspiration from its beauty, with the town appearing in many of his paintings, including one of the lighthouse, our first location from the banknote. The original lighthouse Turner would have known was destroyed in a storm in the 1950s, but today's concrete replacement is just as iconic. A weather vane can also be seen sitting at the top, and at its base is a modern day sculpture of Mrs. Booth, Turner's lover. The other building that shares the note's transparent window is staunchly modern in contrast, the Turner Contemporary Gallery. This jagged building houses modern art and honours Turner with its name, the inspiration for its founding. It's the first contemporary building to be featured on a British banknote and stands close to the site of the guest house where Turner would stay. It's so windy that even the warning sign has blown over. By early afternoon the tide came in and it became abundantly clear why Turner was so inspired by this place. I was sad to leave the town, similarly captivated by its seaside beauty, but we'd had a wonderful day. And more than that, we'd had a wonderful adventure, visiting all the locations from the UK's banknotes and seeing some of the most culturally important sites across the entire country. And when the new £50 note is released next year, I'll undoubtedly go on a similar adventure. Remember to book your next journey with Trainline. It's completely free and I put a download link in the description. We might have had to cancel our overseas holidays this year, but there's certainly a lot to do right here at home.